Morning, everybody. <clears throat> My name is Fritz Krueger. Um, I've been here with Sandus for about uh, two and a half years, and I really expressly joined Sandus for this kind of opportunity to build um, systems that were going to be vertically integrated and use uh, Sandus capability from uh, Flash uh, all the way up through delivering software and systems to an end customer. Uh, so I'm very excited to be here. Um, to that note, just want to make sure everybody understands SanDisk owns a fab, right? We manufacture our own flash. We don't just make the camera cards, we make the die that goes into the camera cards. It's actually a joint venture with Toshiba. It's been 15 years that we've been in this joint venture with Toshiba. It's probably one of the longest lasting, most successful joint ventures in semiconductor history. Uh, the fab's in Yokichi, Japan, so it's a single fab. That fab produces almost half of the worldwide bit output of NAND. SanDisk has just about half of that. Uh, so we design our wafers together, those go through the fab, and then as they come out of the fab, we have separate test and packaging facilities. Um, SanDisk, of course, has this full portfolio of enterprise products, SAS, SATA, PCIe, memory channel attached, and now we're moving up into systems and software, and that's what we'll talk about today a little bit more, what I'm so excited about. So kind of where we started, this new division, systems and software within SanDisk, is really trying to bring Flash to new workloads. Um, we already have a fairly successful enterprise business, and the question is, where did we go, wanted to go from there? And as Alan was just talking about, we really discovered that hard drives don't scale, right? There are lots of limitations. Flash needs to come into the equation. It's already, you know, clearly replaced the 15K and, and stuff, hard drives, but um, we want to walk up the value stack and, and continue to help our customers get more value out of Flash. So what we really found was that it's not just a hard drive replacement, uh, that there's significant values, uh, Alan referred to, in putting Flash in all sorts of different places. And we really discovered it's about the economics, right? Not really a surprise, TCO is, is the master of all. So. The cheaper we can make the flash, or the more affordable we can make the flash, the more use cases we can find for it. So how do we make it more affordable? SanDisk already kind of prides itself as the lowest bit cost NAND available. Um, even though we have the same die as Toshiba, our packaging and test costs are actually slightly lower, so we even beat our, our own fab partner. Um, our enterprise SSDs are best in class and, and very competitive, so where do we go from there? We make it bigger. We build systems. So we're really going after rack scale, disaggregated storage. And what happens? Disaggregation brings freedom to innovate. We're coming out of a component model and being a, going into a uh, full system that then allows us to uh, make our own trade-offs and not you know, specific trade-offs that, um, in general, a component needs to service all possible markets. And since we can disaggregate our storage, build a system-level box, we can then uh, very accurately target that. And we'll talk about what that brings. In addition, when we go to scale, when we go bigger, more flash, there's a change in the way that the economics work, and I'll get into that. So those two things, disaggregation and scale, are really what allows us to make things more affordable.
So, the InfiniFlash system is a 3U rack mount box, standard 19 inch ESA rack, um, 800 millimeters deep, fits in most racks, 500 terabytes of usable space of all flash. It actually presents itself as 64 individual SCSI targets. So in a sense, uh, it looks like a JBOD. Uh, we like to say JBOF, just a bunch of flash. It has all the enterprise features you would expect, uh, enclosure services, uh, runs itself, you know, keeps itself from blowing up, make sure um, we have our, uh, a nice set of uh, uh, CLI and APIs on top of it to help you integrate, et cetera. Very low power, so at uh, 500 gigabytes, pushing it hard is generally about 400 watts. If you, say, format the whole box at the same time, you might get to up to about 750. 780K IOPS with sub-millisecond latency, uh, 1.1 million IOPS at maybe sub-two millisecond latency. I'll show some performance charts. Right now, we're all attached with six gigabit expanders. Since when we started this project, 12 was a little shaky. 12 gigabit uh, is in-house and will is a card-based slap it in upgrade. Uh, so we'll have that soon. We innovated radically on the form factor, as you can see. This isn't using standard two and a half inch drives. And we'll talk about why that is. Our fundamental card is an InfiniFlash card up to 64 per chassis. We can sell partially populated chassis if you want room to grow later. Uh, today, each card is eight terabytes of 1Y MLC. Um, this is something you can kind of peruse later as, and, and pause your uh, screen if you want to see the kind of the, the inner flow chart of uh, how the expander network is connected. But fundamentally, it's fully multi-path. Any input port uh, can connect to any uh, port on any Infinite Flash card. They're all dual ported SAS. So uh, any failure of any component in the data path, everybody can still get to your data. So uh, going back to the capacity for a sec, is that uh, raw capacity or is that after some sort of level of data? So 500 terabytes is user capacity, okay. raw or full user capacity. These days it's hard to tell. Right. So there is no, there's no magic dedupe. There's no that's including all the over provisioning, everything like that, right? So that's what's the connector into it? You mentioned sc it's basically SCSI, but so how do I plug into it's this thing? It's SAS. So SAS. there on the front there are eight, six gigabit today six Sorry, gigabit yep. soon twelve gig gigabit eight gig SAS, SAS connectors. Each each connector is a four lane standard eight hundred eighty eight connector, and we did that. Well, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, Quick performance chart, true, real, measured performance. Um, if you look at the blue line, this is a fully populated box, 64 drives. And we're running 1.1 million IOPS at sub 2 millisecond latency at three nines, 780K ops at uh, sub 1 millisecond latency. So it depends on how hard you want to push it and where you want your latency to sit. Um, partially populated box. You get a little less performance because you don't have quite as many cards uh, to access simultaneously. So you've got neat hardware. I'm sorry? Maybe you're getting onto it now. You've got some neat hardware. Who's it for and why do I care? So Rourke's going to talk a little bit more about that. Okay. Um, so um, I think I'm just going to leave that for him. I'm going to try and just discuss the hardware details in the moment. We can maybe talk about that a little at the end as we transition. Okay. Is that all right? Don't forget yes. that question, though. It's a good one. So I want to talk about how we reach the economics that we're going to reach, or why this is more affordable than buying flash in a 2.5-inch form factor. So we took three major approaches. One is bomb cost reduction, test and manufacturing cost reduction, and a time-to-market improvement. So the first is bomb cost reduction, throwing away the legacy hard drive form factor. We've been stuck in this for gosh knows how long. Um, we're two and a half inch, we're in a laptop hard drive form factor. Right? This is a, a horrible, hideous place to be. It's not what Flash natively wants to do. If you look at that, we have a case, we have a stamped metal case, we've got a machine 
bottom to that case, you've got this very complex trifold mechanism to get enough flash into that tiny little box. Uh, so there are flex connectors, and there are also these uh, these little yellow dots. If you can see them, are uh, capacitors. These are the power fail holdup, so that if power suddenly goes away, all of your data, you know, safely gets flushed to the flash. If you look down here, you'll see the difference. Single board, fewer layers, it's cheaper to manufacture, no flex connectors, no case, just a very, very simple formed top for managing it up in and out of the box. And these are um, a little hard to see from here, but these few capacitors replace all of these, and in fact there's more of these on the back side, because these are cans, these are aluminum organic instead of tantalum. The added thing is these have a higher MTBF, they fail less often, and these are 50 cents, these are five dollars each. Just to give you an idea, bomb cost reduction. So by going with the native form factor, you really reduce the cost. Um, the other thing that we uh, really targeted is to change the NAN to non-NAN ratio, right? If you have a couple of a couple hundred gigabytes in here, you have all this added cost amortized only by cost, you know, a couple of hundred gigabytes. In a fully populated InfiniFlash system, you have 512 terabytes amortized by the cost of that metal. So, for instance, there's eight terabytes per card instead of a few hundred gigabytes or maybe even one or two terabytes in some of the newest two and a half inch. So there's only one controller, one set of DRAM, one set of capacitors for every eight terabytes. So we also made these decisions to make it something akin to a JBOD in that and SAS connected. Um, so there's no baseboard controller, there's no integrated RAID, there's no CPUs or fancy services. And the idea there is that we're going to give this to our customers in, because it's the most flexible thing that they can apply to. We're not going to eliminate markets by forcing particular services into the box that add cost and narrow the possible market it can go into. So by placing a server on top of this, you can now get and you load up your software your favorite version of whatever file system you want, whatever object store, block store, etc. You can now use this system uh, in a very simple way. SAS connected, you plug it in and you go. It works. SCSI is great. Do you provide also multiple server connection just to have uh, uh, redundant uh, storage to, to avoid the se server failure? Right. So what we do offer, and we're not going to talk too much about today, but we do have two software offerings. We have a, a, a scale-up block storage device, and uh, software, I'm sorry, not device, and a scale-out uh, object and block store uh, offering. And both of those, the, uh, the way that SanDisk is going to sell them is you bring your own server. We're not going to tell you you must use Dell or HP or some white box, right? Um, there are people who can manufacture a server much more cheaply than SanDisk can. Right? And so we're going to capitalize on that. But can works uh, as a shared uh, JBOD? Absolutely. So, for example, with uh, Microsoft... Uh, uh, cluster services, out, uh, right. So, out, uh, so, right. So we have some prototypes in, in uh, Windows clustering right now. Um, it works fantastic for uh, things like uh, Gluster or, or GPFS uh, because of the multi-pathing capabilities and all the failover. It just, again, SCSI is such a wonderful standard. It's been developed for so long. That because we're fully compliant, you plug it in, <coughs> and it just works. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tell me how standards um, are. So, 512, 3K, 65. I want to give you a little bit of a notion of scale when I talk about scale. It's 512 terabytes. That's 32,768 NAND die in the box. And if you put all those next to each other, that would be 65 square feet of good NAND silicon. The screen here is probably, what, 6 by 10? So you extended this to the edges and then added another maybe 5 square feet of silicon. That's how much silicon is packed into that box, just in pure NAND. 
And at the manufacturing technology we were at, the 1Y node, a human red blood cell would cover about 100,000 nan bits. So fill that. Right, that's scale. So fundamentally, disaggregation provides that flexibility to innovate. So SanDisk is very much about disaggregation of storage. That scale provides new economies so that we can make it far more affordable. And our first result out of this division is this InfiniFlash product. And now I'm going to let Rourke stand up and tell you all about the great use cases and uh, our customer reactions to our InfiniFlash product. Cool. Great. Thank you. Thanks.